Boise State is back home and hoping to recharge its batteries and its NCAA hopes as the Broncos' Derek Alston welcomes in the streak and running Rebels of UNLV and their outstanding playmaker, Bryce Hamilton. Next. It is time to get moving in the Mountain West Conference. Boise State coming off two tough losses, looking to rebound tonight against UNLV, which is coming off two consecutive wins. And it's important because you look at the Mountain West Conference standings, Utah State leads the way, a half game ahead of Colorado State, which has played excellent basketball. Then you have Boise State, San Diego State, Nevada's been really good, and then UNLV at the 500 mark. Hey everybody, I'm Tom McCarthy along with Julia and Vianney. It's our pleasure to be with you tonight as we get set for what should be a, a good back-to-back -back between Boise State and UNLV. Boise State's lost two straight, uh, Julianne, and they have got to get things rolling. Well, we've surpassed the halfway point of the regular season here, and now you reach a point where the NCAA is looking at you a little bit closer, and this is a team that's been talked about as a team that's on the bubble, so they need to make it as difficult as possible for them not to allow them in the tournament, so every single game at this point counts even more. All right, we've seen some prolific scores for both of these teams this year. Derek Alston leads the way for Boise State. He's been such a joy to watch throughout his career, and he's been impressive in every way, shape, and form. And his efficiency and numbers have gotten even better. He's, was, he's got a high-level feel for the game. He's established himself as a scorer. He stepped up as a facilitator, too, which means that he's even more of a complete player this season. And there's no doubt that he needs these two guys to help out. Yeah, I mean, Shiver and Kijab, I mean, the reason all Austin hasn't been forced to do quite as much is because when these two guys step up, they take some of that pressure off him, which has made this an even more complete team. All right. Meanwhile, for UNLV, and it's a really good team. They've got some good offense. Bryce Hamilton leads the way for the running Rebels. He's been tremendous. I mean, he does everything on the floor, offensively, defensively, you name it, and he is doing things for this team. He's coming off that ankle injury, but he's got an ability to score in many different ways, and that's been key for their success. But he needs a little help. And when David Jenkins Jr. starts to play a little bit better, and he has lately, he's putting up numbers, then this team is really tough to stop. This is their X factor. They can definitely score when those two guys get things rolling. We'll see if both teams are high rolling tonight. The Running Rebels and the Broncos next. T.J. Otzelberger is hoping that he has the success at UNLV that he had at South Dakota State when he won 70 games. He was unbelievable with the Jackrabbits. A little different style there, but he does feel like his style will eventually get to that point with UNLV. The starting lineups for both teams. Well, for Boise, we wondered if there would be a change in the starting lineup, but this is the ninth consecutive game that Leon Rice has gone with this starting five. And for UNLV, they don't go too deep on the bench. They might play two, possibly three guys off the bench. Leon Rice has done an excellent job at Boise State after a long time at Gonzaga as an assistant for Mark Few. He's one win away from matching the all-time wins record in Boise State history. Bob Stafford is walking towards center court. He's the referee for tonight's ballgame. This is a good matchup right here between the big men Armouche for Boise State and Abake Jong for UNLV. We are underway. The first of two between UNLV and Boise State. And man to man out of the gate. We're probably going to see some jump defense from UNLV in this ballgame. I think it's very possible. I mean, they're playing against a Derek Alston Jr., who is tough to stop. You kind of kind of pick your poison with this group. Rick O'Neill calls the jump ball. Armouche had a clear path to the basket on that look from Bryce Hamilton. All right, so the jump ball goes to the running Rebels. They don't have a true point guard. You'll see the freshman run the point. Here's Hamilton into the paint, slips it to Mbake Jong. The ball is tipped up top. 
You see how many times UNLV runs the shot clock down under five. Grill for three, no good, off the front of the rim, and the rebound is pulled down by Dennis. And they're not going to be afraid to run it under five and get a good look, and that's going to be important that they don't run shots tonight. Mm, Alston is so smooth. He's lanky, and that's his first bucket of the night. So smooth is the right word for him. What did T.J. Otzelberger tell us? He said he's he's skilled for a forward, and he's still improving with each passing game. Ibake John tries to pass to Grill. Grill to the corner. Baseline for Wood. He lost it. And Hamilton has it knocked away. And Boise State will come out with it. A good defensive possession that time from Boise State. You can tell they're pretty locked in on that end. Leon Rice told us earlier this week, he said our, our first practice back in Boise was the best one we've had all year. That's and, a tough and maybe shot. in his career. It, the he way he that. made it yep. sound. I was like, wow, this team is not happy. They lost two in a row. I would not want to face Boise State after that. Jump ball, and the ball goes to the Broncos. And Alston here does just a terrific job reading that on-ball screen so smooth. He's never rushed, just very poised. And, and we've watched him blossom throughout his career, just matured every season. And Leon Rice did tell us, he said, part of the reason we were so good the other day in practice, he said, was because of Derek Alston and his leadership role. Key jab in the paint, lost control. Picked up by Grill. And right, here come the running Rebels. I see they're looking to slow it down. They are not looking to push it so far. It's going to be about that tempo. Little motion offense. Plenty of time of the shot clock. The freshman Blake lost control out of bounds. And it's going to remain UNLV basketball with 14 on the shot clock. Nick Blake, of course, uh, taking over the point guard duties with Marvin Coleman out for the year for UNLV. And they did call a foul on that. It's not out of bounds. It'll be a foul on Boise State. And UNLV gets 20 on the shot clock. In the inbounds. Hamilton, spin move. Goes to the corner for Grill for three. It's good. Uh, that's, that's what happens when Hamilton penetrates. Pitches makes others better and Caleb Grill is certainly a guy that you want shooting from long range Yeah, Grill comes in 34% from beyond the arc He's averaging nine and a half per game the answer for Dennis is no good And Grill runs down the rebound for the runner Rebels And now UNLV goes back on offense Bucky John waves everybody through, gives it off to Wood. Shot clock is down to 12. They're okay with this. Ball is loose. And now Hamilton with the shot clock under five. Hamilton lets it fly and it rims out. And Bucky John with the rebound and a foul on the floor on Armouche. But again, a nice possession once again. And Coach Otzelberger told, told us before the game, he would have loved to have a group where he could run all the time, but yeah. it's just not going to happen all the time when you're developing a program. You've got a young team, and, and they're really learning how to play in the half court really beautifully, and that was a, a perfect example right there. The good ball movement and the better shot. 3-2 the score. Not a whole lot of offense to start the ball game. Lucas Milner in the game for the first time. He's number 25 for Boise State. Shot clock is under five. And off the side of the rim, and the rebound for the Broncos. Alston, he's left open, 17-footer. That's the one he made before. How do you leave him that open? There was no one within sight, and that is a man who can knock it down blindfolded. I think the thing about him, and I think it's also the same way with Bryce Hamilton, if that's not open, they will go to the basket. Because they're complete. They yes. have a complete game. They're the blocking foul called on Milner. All right, so not a whole lot so far.
But you know, Derek Alston is going to come to play and perform. He is right from the get-go. A couple of pull-up jumpers, just what we like to see. Broncos up one. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Trulicity. I remember standing next to Larry Johnson during the preseason NIT at Madison Square Garden and thinking this is a huge human being. He was an excellent player. Speaking of excellent players, Bryce Hamilton to your left and Derek Alston to your right. Alston's got some buckets, but let's take a look at your keys to the game, Julian. Well, for UNLV, it's got to be more than just Bryce. They need multiple players to step up and score around Hamilton tonight, and I feel like Jenkins is kind of that X factor, and then transition defense, it's pivotal to not allow easy buckets to get up and down the floor, and for Boise State, 20 assists and start fast. They're a better team that when they share the basketball, and when they don't and they go to one-on-one -on -one basketball, they're not as good, and starting fast has to do with responding off of two weeks weekend losses and I think so far they've done that made a couple buckets at least Austin has started out pretty fast <laughs> Jenkins in the game for the first time number five and the three-pointer is no good but the rebound is pulled down by Blake Blake the freshman there's Jenkins he can score in bunches he was in the starting lineup to begin the season and coming off the bench and Bakke Jong his Turnaround, hook shot is no good. The ball out of bounds it remains UNLV basketball. And you see Armouche is stuck down low there, and he's doing a pretty good def job defensively, just one-on-one -on -one in the paint. All right, so the shot clock resets to 20 because the ball hit the rim before it went out of bounds, and the inbounds goes to Grill. Jenkins off the curl, and it's too hard off the back of the iron. That's the fourth offensive rebound for UNLV. Grill for three. He's got it, his second one. And that's the best time to knock a three down off of an offensive rebound. The defense is scrambling, and you find your shooter, and Grill is ready for it. Locked and loaded. Well, that ends at 0 for 4 for UNLV. And the runner Rebels take the two-point lead. Under 15 to play in the first half. Alston kicks it out. Key jab. His three is no good. Blake with an easy rebound. TJ Otzelberger told us that Blake is evolving right before his eyes and everybody's eyes at UNLV. He's gotten thrown into the fire. Grill again for three. That's number three. And it's a five-point lead. Okay, Caleb Grill. He's got the hot hand. It's a four-point lead for UNLV. DJ Otzelberger said that he's excited for this offseason for Grill because when he was in high school in Kansas, he was a three-sport athlete, high jump champion, quarterback, star quarterback. And he said, now it's just basketball. He says, I'm just, he's just focusing on basketball. And I asked him, I'm like, what made him choose basketball when he had all these other options? And he said, you know, they're a basketball family. Yep. And that's important. He loves the game. But think about it. Now he's solely focused on basketball. He's going to explode as an offensive player over the next few years. Here's Max Rice. And Shaver, bounce pass to Wilner. And Wilner's foul going up. Or Milner, I should say. And he's going to go to the free throw line for two. That'll be the first for UNLV. Luke Milner, six foot ten. And he converts the first one. He's spelling Armouche. And now the second free throw. Boise State as a team, 73% from the free throw line. But he makes both. It's a two-point game. Substitution, Armouche back in, Milner out. It's one of the things I like uh, this year is just watching the reaction of the benches. And you can hear everything, basketball. right? You can hear everything. <laughs> that can be good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> Tillis away for the basket. 
And a whistle and a foul. They're going to get Alston for that one. That'll be his first foul. Now the fourth team foul. Derek Olsen didn't agree with that. Jenkins will trigger the inbounds off the low flex. Hamilton, elbow jumper. A little too strong again. Tillis with the board. They're dominating the offensive boards. There is no one in a white jersey putting a body on any of the UNLV players. Yeah, that works out for another bucket and a timeout call by Boise State. A three by Jenkins off the sixth offensive rebounds of this first half. Good start for the running Rebels. They lead it by five, 11 to six. Jenkins is three, makes it 11-6. So six second chance points for UNLV, and both were three pointers. And as you mentioned, Julianne, how important it is to find that three pointer off the uh, offensive rebounds. And it's it's also pivotal to, to think about this UNLV team and how much time they missed during the COVID break. And this team's now been back together, and, and they're starting to put pieces together, and you're starting to see them play well. And, and yeah, they're finding the right players out there. Boise State on offense, 0 for 2 from beyond the arc so far. Rice, and a whistle blows and a foul on Hamilton. Alston was bumped to the floor. That's his first. Team's third. Boise State's gone without a field goal in the last 245. Rice to Shaver. Entry pass to Alston. Rice got his man to move, and he got a wide open three pointer. That's a beautiful skip pass from Austin. And I mentioned in the open that Austin's passing ability and facilitating has improved this season. And you just saw why. I mean, he's not just looking to be a black hole, he's going to find you if you're open. And that's a good sign, too, for the Broncos that Rice hit that. He had been one for his last 10 from beyond the arc. Shooters got to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and they normally do. <laughs> As Blake cuts to the basket, that's an athletic move by the freshman. Bryce off the screen. Acott. Acott off the screen from Armouche. He'll watch the three. That's good. And you go underneath that screen, and that is the perfect opportunity to knock it down. And you've got to go over it. Acott liked that one. Were your coaches different? with how you were going to defend that screen? Absolutely. I mean, if you knew going into the game who was a shooter and who you have to go over top of, with, and, and underneath. If the person was not a threat, you go under. But if we went under and it was a shooter, we were ripped apart <laughs> in timeout. <laughs> so speaking of shooters, Blake, one of 10 newcomers on the UNLV roster converts that three. It's a four-point lead. And everything right now coming very naturally to UNLV, very easily on the offensive end. Whistle blows of the foul. I think that's going to go against Hamilton, who was in foul trouble in that Air Force game. And Alston will go to the free throw line. All right, so it's a four-point game. UNLV on top. Terrific passing for Boise State. Equals a nice shot from the perimeter. And we've got a pretty good ball game here. And we're seeing it on both sides. UNLV making it rain. And they're up just a few points. Well, it was a tough couple of games for Boise State against Nevada. Game one, Grant Sherfield really came to life offensively. Three seconds left on the clock. He was able to nail that one. Then Ray J. Dennis could not convert. That ball did everything but go down. And then Sherfield again in game number two. His offense was in tip-top shape. And Nevada won that one as well. But the Broncos still have an excellent tournament resume. Our own Jerry Palm says that they're part of the first four out despite a net ranking of 36. Yeah, I mean, I do think that uh, that it's hard to believe, and you, are, you and I were talking about it before the game, that Boise State won't get in because they just seem like a team that really could compete, and they've got some good wins. And I personally think that they should get in, but we will see the, how they finish the season out. And I think that's why all of these games, like we said in the open, are so important 
because you really want to win out. You don't want to lose any games that you should win. And so it's really important from this point forward that this Boise State squad wins when they need to. Yeah, they had a great start to the season. I mean, they're 14 and four overall. As but Alston, they have 13, 13 in, in a row. row to start it the was year. unbelievable. Yep. Alston missed the first free throw. He's 84%. He doesn't miss much. And the thing, too, with Boise State, they've won some games by big amounts of points. Six games by at least 20 points. It's it's like they've been kind of rolling through at times. Yeah, I think they talked about that Nevada game, the Nevada games. They said it was all about their defense. They said their defense needs to be better. Jenkins for three, and that's his second three of the night. Uh, right now, UNLV spreading the floor with the three ball. Five of nine from beyond the arc. They've made seven shots. Five have been from three-point lands. Acott caught, kept his pivot foot. And now Dennis. Dennis for three off the front of the rim. Loose ball. And Bakke Jong pulls down the rebound. UNLV is now four for its last four. Armouche knocks it out of bounds. It remains UNLV basketball. All right, so Jenkins is a big story for UNLV. I mean, coming off the bench these last couple of games, he played only 17 minutes. Defense was not where it should be. And then 30 minutes in game two against Air Force and had 26 points, and they needed all 26 of those points. He's a big-time scorer and a player when he wants to. There he is they again. Off the front of the rim. And the rebound for the Broncos. He's preseason newcomer of the year for a reason. Armouche to the basket. And a little up and under. He's fouled. And he's going to get a couple free throws. Uh, it's good to see Boise State attacking that two-man game. Great job. A little hang time here from Armouche. Drawing the contact. Transfer from East Tennessee State. They recruited him from Serbia. He said, I never thought about playing in the States. But a couple of the college scouts were out watching his Serbian team. They saw him. He's mainly a rebounder. That's where he does his the mo most of his work. But he's also been a, he's been a good scorer. He's averaging over seven a game. Yeah, and he's got that international experience playing in some very competitive tournaments over there, which really helps. I mean, the international game has flooded the game both at the college level in the U.S. and at the NBA level. Second free throw. Too strong. And that ball knocked out of bounds. It's going to be... Is it going to be Boise State basketball? It looked like Grill had touched it last, but I thought the official had pointed toward UNLV side of the floor. Ten twenty-one to play. Will be Broncos basketball. And the shot clock at twenty. That's a tough pass and a jump ball. It's going to go back to the Runner Rebels. A good defense that time from the Runner Rebels, and just. Not a good offensive scenario there from Boise State. You've got to be more patient and get somebody open. See, nobody's moving. Everybody's mm -hmm. standing still. Blake and Tillis, two freshmen on the floor. Grill off the high screen. Jenkins back to Grill, fires another three, no good. And Jenkins with the offensive rebound. That's been a huge storyline of this first half. Seven offensive rebounds for UNLV. And along the baseline on the tough pass, Blake to Tillis. And those offensive rebounds have led to points uh, a few different times. So that's really something Boise State's got to look at and clean up. Bryce Hamilton on the bench. In foul trouble against Air Force. A little bit of foul trouble here. Dutrieve. And Ray J. Dennis is being left alone mm. on that left wing. Yeah, he's a standard. He's number 10. Dutrieve's runner high off the glass. No good. Armouche with the putback. It's good. 
That's a nice job, and that's why you've got to stick with it. Just the gritty hustle plays. Just the second offensive rebound for Boise State, but it pulls the Broncos within three. Now Jenkins is fouled by Dennis. Marmouche on the weak side. Uh, you gotta love that. I mean, most shots are gonna go long, so you've gotta be on the opposite side, and that's where he sat pretty. But that's what we've been seeing from UNLV, and, and Boise State that time giving a little bit of their medicine. Halston back in. Moses Wood inbounds the basketball. Blake, that's a tough pass to Tillis. He's made a couple of tough passes. That ball knocked out of bounds. It will be ULV basketball. It's so important that that left wing or the right wing is a good entry pass. You've got to get yourself open over there to start the offense. Jenkins trying to get isolated to Blake with the shot clock at three. He kept his body going. Armouche pulls down the board. Now Acott bringing the ball up for the Broncos. And a hand-checking foul called on Moses Wood. That'll be his second personal foul. We've seen some hand-checking throughout this night so far, and that's the right call. That is definitely the right call. You've got to make sure you're moving your body. Yeah, the freedom of movement has been accentuated in the college game these last couple of years. Now they want more offense, yep. and they're going to call it. Alston for three, and he doesn't get the roll. Armouche with the offensive rebound and the putback. Armouche has been a beast. Last couple possessions, something has been lit underneath him, but a great job. See, he's running right to the rim. Nobody puts a body on him, and he just wants it more. That's what you see right here. That's what those garbage points come from. A really strong putback. He's strong. I mean, you look at him, he's built. Ties the game at 19. UNLV has not scored in three minutes. With eight and a half to play here in the first half. Coach Otzelberger told us this is one of the problems with his team. They go in periods where they look great and then they're inconsistent for several minutes and that's one of the things he wants to clean up with this group and that comes with maturity yes Shaver called for the foul I thought talking to TJ uh, this week uh, both coaches really um, was very transparent not only with his dealings with David Jenkins which I know you've heard on this air Dave Ryan was talking about it during the last ball game uh, but he and Leon Rice both uh, were open. They were honest. Which we always assessment. like. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate that. Hamilton lost it out of bounds, and it will be Boise State basketball. And neither coach pretends where, that they are exactly where they want to be either. Acott will bring the basketball up for the Broncos. They find Alston. Shaver off the screen. Nice. That's a really good look. That's what we call yep. a belly cut. You allow a belly cut, you cut, and they cut right in front of your belly, and it's just a no-no, wide open layup. I know you like to pass when you play, but how big is it <laughs> to have a, a center like that that can pass the basketball? Oh, it's even it's even better in a lot of ways. Nice steal here in anticipation. And Acott slams it home. Boise State on top, 23-19. Great poaching. Listen, if you can have a big man that is not just a black hole, there's a place for him on the floor. It's a 10-0 run for the Broncos. Jenkins try to answer, cannot. And here comes Shaver to Alston. Size advantage, and Armouche is fouled going up. He's going to go back to the free throw line. 
Yeah, Boise State just looking real good here the last few minutes, and it starts on the defensive end, and a terrific job here, anticipating an ACOT with the finish at the other end. The next greatest generation is now, presented by Army National Guard, and we're going to spotlight Derek Alston, Jr. You know that he's a grad senior. He redshirted his first year when he was 148 pounds. Business major, joined Boise State as a walk-on in 2016. Well, not only that, and you see his look there, he had a little different look over the last year or so when he was able to help organize a coach drive last winter for local families in need. He participates annually in the Seven Cares Idaho Shares Day of Giving, and he used his platform this past year to support the Black Lives Matter movement, encouraging young people and other student athletes to vote. His dad is the head coach of the next G League team, and they have done an excellent job raising this young man. You want to talk about somebody who came in as an, uh, I would say, a guy nobody really heard of? A walk-on? Like, yeah. I can't believe that when you think about how he's playing. And averaging 17 a game and third best scoring in the Mountain West. Really incredible, and I think that red shirt year really helped him because I know, speaking from experience, I actually red shirted my first first year of college, and you just would rather be an older senior than a younger freshman who is not developed and doesn't know the system. Did you think that though when you were red shirting? No, I hated it. Yeah. I did not want to do it. I was not happy about it, but it was the transfer rules at the time, which are very different now. But very different now. <laughs> 12-0 run, you saw the scoring drought is over four minutes for UNLV. Tillis slides his way along the baseline. That was athletic. It was, it nearly looked like a walk, but it looked like he kept his pivot foot. 25-21, field goals are even, the made field goals. UNLV's had more opportunities. Alston skips it, Acott for three. In and out, Armouche keeps it alive, but it's in the hands of UNLV and Tillis. Jenkins. Tillis dribbled it right off his foot out of bounds. You know, we mentioned uh, Alston when he came in, he was 148 pounds, which we joked with Leon Rice. I said I was 148 pounds in the seventh grade. He was 148 as a freshman at six foot eight. And Incredible. He's still slender, but he can move. He's slender, but he's deceptively strong. He's got a really perfect basketball body when you think about it. Key jab against Hamilton. Nice job by Hamilton. And Hamilton doesn't get the call, and the foul is going to be against Tillis. Nope, it's going to be against Mbake Jean. Tillis is there, too. And to the free throw line is Kijab, the transfer from Oregon. Hasn't gotten too much going here tonight, but he's certainly capable of putting up some big numbers. Hey, tomorrow at 6 Eastern, join us as Gino Oriem and his second-ranked Huskies take on Georgetown for a Big East showdown. Right here on CBS Sports Network, huge win for UConn this past week against South Carolina. Second shot is good. Key jab, who actually called Leon Rice when we were on with Leon yesterday. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Leon had, had told him about a book that he wanted him to read called The Inner Game of Tennis. And Kijab said, can you bring that book with you? As Hamilton drives to the basket, and the rebound pulled down by the Broncos. I like that he's a reader. I am too, and boy, he can learn a lot. Kijab hung up the phone and said, you're the man, coach. And coach <laughs> said, no, you're the man. Hey, Kai. Wow, great move. The lead is eight, largest of the night for either team. Five fifteen to play in the first half. Hamilton's got to get going. 
And Hamilton finally has a bucket. This is first of the night. And we mentioned earlier that he's been battling that ankle injury and has not been the same since that injury. He's starting to look better, but his mobility and his explosiveness is not quite where it needs to be just yet. And T.J. Otzelberger said there are times where you're like, okay, he looks fine, and then there are other times where he doesn't look himself. It's a 16-2 run for Boise State, making 18-2 as Acott is able to nail another pull-up jumper. And it's a timeout called by UNLV. 31-23. Pretty athletic moves here. And Emmanuel Acon getting it done. The last couple possessions been tremendous. Derek Alston has five points so far, but it's Acott who leads the way with nine for Boise State. It's an eight-point lead. Acott really turning a corner here these last few games. Milner on Tillis. Grill lost it out of bounds, and it's going to be Boise State basketball. And Boise State's done a pretty good job clamping down defensively. That's been important, which has caused the UNLV dr droughts. Yeah, it's exactly what you talked about before, what TJ Otzelberger told us about. Said we'd have spurts where we're really good, and then spurts where we're not so good. They're in that not so good spurt right now. Acott, shot clock at 10. A little crossover move, and it's good. Boy, that is a majestic offensive move. That is his spot. He is in it. He yeah. knows how to create his own shot because he really has very good ball handling skills. The average is eight and a half. He has 11 in this first half. Grill, he was hot early, and he connects on another three-pointer. That's his third three of this first half, and man, did UNLV need it. 33-26, they needed it because Acott has been on the move. Look at this, little crossover. Pull up Jumper. He loves that elbow. It's a seven point lead. Eight minutes ago, it was a 19 13 UNLV lead, and now a 27 run by Boise State has given them a seven point lead. And part of the reason is because of Emmanuel Acott, who Leon Rice told us is turning the corner. Well, certainly today he's turning the corner. Well, he's been hampered by some injury this season, and I think we haven't seen the true Emmanuel Acott, and you are seeing it here tonight. I mean, this man can do it in such a variety of ways, and he knows how to create his own shot, and he's so good off the dribble, and he's really loved that mid-range game. Well, if you like those highlights, you might see them again on AT&T at the half. We'll check in with the gang in New York to get you caught up on an exciting night of college hoops. Again, that's coming up on AT&T at the half. Acott was one of the highest rated prep players to ever join Boise State. And he averages just eight really all on the season. He's already surpassed that. Spent a year and a half at Arizona. Alston. His runner off the glass, no good. Armouche with the rebound. And a long-range three is good. Marcus Shaver connects. And the lead is 10. With some lows, offensive foul. Alston sold it well as Tillis has called for it. And Boise State doing a nice job here attacking the old glass, the kick out, and then Shaver getting on the board. He hasn't gotten too much opportunity, and he's a guy who needs to. He averages 13 a game, 12 or 13 a game, and, and that was his first bucket, maybe even attempt of the night. Scored almost 900 points at Portland before transferring to the Broncos. Key jab against Tillis. He jab into the paint, fadeaway jumper is 
Hayes, no good. And a foul on the floor. And I think Armouche is going to go back to the free throw line. Armouche is in the middle of everything. Yeah. I mean, whether he is crashing the glass and kicking it out like we saw in the possession before, he's getting fouled underneath. He's just battling. Kadia was called for the foul. He was just put into the Del Kadia called for the foul. He just pulled into the ballgame number 10. And Armouche missed that first one. So Del Kadia checks out. He got about a minute's time. And Bake Zhang will check back in. Second shot. It's good. So he missed one, made one. He's five of seven. Four different UNLV players, by the way, have two fouls with two and a half to play. And UNLV has not attempted a free throw yet. Jenkins. Little zone by Boise State. Yeah, it looks like it's either that or it's a matchup. Yeah. Tillis with the shot clock at five inside. Mbappe John throws it up, no good. And Kijab with the rebound. Uh, what I did not like about that possession is the ball stayed on the left handed side of the floor the entire time. They're going to get Armouche for an offensive foul, a little push from behind. That's his second personal foul. So he'll check out. You see here under, underneath Armouche crashing the glass as he usually does. Eh, I didn't see a heck of a lot of body there, to there, be honest. There was a battle. It, it was for both of them. Yep. But it'll send Mbake Jong to the free throw line. Eight points, nine rebounds in the last game against Air Force. Front end of the one and one is good, so he'll get a second shot. He is their leading rebounder. I thought in the Air Force game, he did some really good things in the second half. Just looked athletic, looked like he was caught up in his body in a good way. I mean, he is a, a guy they rely on for the energy and, and that effort. And when he can do that, that really can energize the rest of his team. Heard Kijab say he had it, and he did. He gives it to Akot, he'll bring it up. The lead is 10 for Boise State. Austin inside, Kijab got position deep against Tillis. Yeah, that was a beautiful pass, too. Really quick, no hesitation, just whips it in there. 12-point lead. Blake, tough pass, no roll, and the rebound for Boise State. And Acott, side winds up the floor. Now that's a tough pass. Yeah, a careless one. But here, look at this pass. This is an NBA type of pass, just very strong, quick, one-handed, whips it inside. Just a beautiful job here executing. And that's the way to cut hard. If you want to get an open shot, Kijab cut really hard. That's why he got that look. Coming off a game in which he was one for six. So this is a good sign. Grill for three, short, but it's kicked out of bounds off the foot of Milner, Boise State. So it'll remain UNLV basketball. One oh seven to play in the first half. Jenkins will inbound. Tillis to Blake. Blake out of bounds. And that's the eighth turnover for UNLV in this first half. Boise State has picked up the energy on that end of it, and they're making UNLV play a little bit faster than they want to, and they have turned it over a lot. And this is an unnecessary turnover, but we've mentioned that there's no true point guard for this, this UNLV team. Now, Blake's done a great job as just a freshman running the show, but yeah, that's not an easy thing for a freshman to do. No, you're going to make mistakes like that. Key job for three. It's good. Nothing but net. 
for him. He's been impressive. That's more like it for him. He's got nine in this game. He a lot of weapons. A <laughs> lot of weapons. And it's the largest lead of the first half. It's up to 15 with 30 seconds left. Jenkins fade away. Jumper is good. And a foul. They're either going to get Milner or Kijab for a foul. It's an important swing. Yeah, it really is. You know, they give UNLV, I think, goes to the line here. Yeah, it's one and one. Which you can establish momentum and, and cut this thing down going into the half. Milner's going to check out with a couple fouls. At Devin Tillis, the freshman from Los Angeles to the free throw line, 10 for 10 on the year from the free throw line. And make it 11 for 11. A little advice from the official. Could you hear him? <laughs> I didn't hear him. I saw the body language. <laughs> I think he was saying, hey, guys, cut it out. Cut it out. That's probably right. <laughs> Go to your benches. I did hear that. <laughs> so Leon Rice wanted something. So Bob Staffen is going to bring the other two officials over. And let us see what they're trying to uh, talk about. Rick O'Neill is over at the scores table taking a look at the the video. Yeah, they are looking at something here at that last possession. Do you think it's a, about who the foul is against? It, it may be about that. It, it could be about that and the time on the clock. I think it's more about who committed the foul, though. I'm not sure if one of the coaches called the ref over. And this is the replay here. I think they, if, if it's about the foul, I think they, they got it on Milner, and I think they got that right. You can see the little shove. Yeah, it was off the ball there. Mm -hmm. He's on the bench now with those two fouls. And it certainly was not a flagrant of any sorts. No. They could be looking at the time as well. All right, so Rick O'Neill is going to tell T.J. Otzelberger what the deal is. Watch 25 and the shove. Jenkins. I laugh at that a little bit because what T.J. Otzelberger told us about Jenkins, he said, you know, as their relationship has evolved, <laughs> I've had to great. learn to listen to him more more like something like the officials doing right now listening to Jenkins as he's on the floor he's known him for a very long time he's yeah. coached him a long time his dad's coached him and, and yes when you get older and I, I played for my dad and I know it it gets tougher to hear from that person if they've been talking in your life for a long time mm. so yeah he, he was very honest about that he's got to really listen to his coach now by example and I say that I laugh a little bit. I don't think T.J. Otzelberger is laughing at all about it because he, <laughs> he needs him to be focused. At, and he said, listen, he goes, the reason he's coming off the bench, it is from a discipline standpoint. I am trying to prove a point. All right, so back we go. The clock is fine. They have it sorted out about who the foul is against. And now back to the free throw line is Mbake Jung, who made one. You know what? I think we got it now. Tillis shot the first one. That's what they were looking at. So they took the point off. They took, there was the wrong player on the line. So the wrong player <laughs> was on the line. And you know what? Now that you look at the replay, they did get it right, and they did have it wrong. So Tillis shot the first one. Forget that one. That did not count. Did not count. <laughs> All right, so he made one, missed one. And the ball will remain with UNLV. 
I have to tell you, that, that kind of just whisked right past me, me that too, Tillis though. was at the free throw line. Me too. It's a little tougher to see. <laughs> All right, so Milner checks back in. He has two fouls. As Blake will inbound, gets it into Jenkins. How about this swing? If they can make it three here, it'll be a six-point swing. Blake. Tillis, whistle blows, and a foul called. It looks like they're pointing toward Miller. And Mbake John will go to the free throw line. Uh, they're calling it tight here down the stretch. That's three fouls. And he hasn't even played a ton. And he's got three. Seven minutes, three fouls. And Abake Jong will go back to the free throw line. Set, set, set. And this is the front end of the one and one. Alston with the basketball. Acott with the game clock under 10. Acott's had the hot hand. Game clock is at three. Kijab lets it fly off the front of the rim. No good. And the end of the first half. Hit some speed bumps in the last 30 seconds, but the clock goes to zero, and Boise State has a 12-point lead. 42 to 30, the final score for the score at halftime. We'll go to AT&T at the half when we return. Boise State in control by a dozen. Well, back at Boise State as we get set for the second half of tonight's ball game between the Broncos and the Running Rebels of UNLV. Take a look at our Logitech first half statistics. Well, Boise State wanted to improve from the free throw line because they had some front ends of one and ones that cost them in the games against Nevada. Well, they're 10 of 13. They've taken 13 free throws compared to UNLV's five. Three point shooting, though, is starting to even out after UNLV had the early advantage at bench points go to Boise State. And as we get set for the second half, along with Julianne Vianney, I'm Tom McCarthy. All right, so this was at one point a very dominant UNLV first half, but then the the switch was flipped. Yeah, I mean, that was how this game started. I mean, UNLV came out guns a-blazing. They were playing terrific, and uh, Boise State was in the drought, and then they totally flipped the switch, and a lot of that had to do with their defensive efforts, which led to the offense, and that was a real key. If you look at the defense, and Boise State forced eight turnovers, which led to 14 points off of the turnovers, and this was the turning point for this squad. They turned up the volume here and it led to their offense and they also cleaned up the rebounding front that was a problem early on UNLV had really been winning on the glass and then all of a sudden I don't know what happened in that timeout but Leon Rice said something right and the guys definitely turned a corner that is a good point he did use a timeout early in the first half and things definitely changed after that timeout it also helped that Acott had 11 points in the first half off the bench. Bingo. <laughs> and you don't always know what you'll get from Acott. He was really tremendous. And if he can continue that effort, it's just another weapon for them. All right, Broncos with the basketballs. We begin the second half on top by 12. Shaver looking in for Alston. Alston now out along the perimeter. That's a tough pass. He got it across. And the runner's no good. Wood with the rebound for UNLV. Bryce Hamilton was quiet in the first half, only two points. And he's got the basketball. Baseline jumper, and in and out, and then back in again. They got to get him going, don't they? And these first couple minutes are really important, I think, for UNLV to try to grab momentum. And Alston hanging on the rim. Better be careful with that. All right, so Hamilton for the season averaging 18.2 per game. He's in the top three in the Mountain West. He only had two points in the first half. Do you think the ankle was bothering him or was it just the defense? It might have been, but the defense, I think, is focused on him too, and they're going to make it difficult for Hamilton 
every single night. And to be a little hampered with the ankle doesn't help matters, that's for sure, if you're getting extra attention. But if other players can step up, it will ease up some of Hamilton's pressure as we look down there at his ankle support there. Second free throw for Alston is good, so he makes both. It's 44-32. Problem with those ankle injuries, and you know this better than anybody, Julianne, is that once you have one, it, it seems to happen over and over again. The same ankle a yeah. lot of times, exactly. And that can be a problem. And this was a pretty bad one from what we were told. Hamilton misses a little short on that three. Shaver into the paint. Key jab. Key jab, shot it when he was coming down, and Blake with the easy rebound. And Hamilton will go to the free throw line, fouled as he went running through the paint. But one of the few times we've seen UNLV get out in transition. How much have we really seen them explode and get easy looks? So Hamilton on the break, that's what you want. Good job here drawing the contact and sending himself to the line where they did not go very often in the first half. Made the first free throw. In the last game against Air Force, this is why Jenkins was so important. He picked up his fourth foul with just over 13 minutes to play in the second half. He made one, missed one. Shaver to key jab, into the paint. Shaver again, stutter step, may have gotten away with a travel. Key jab for three, and it's good. Really, really nice patience. Key jab, a 31% shooter from distance. Well, he's in double digits. It's the 14th time this year he's been in double digits. Hamilton, grill for three. He got it going early in the first half, and he gets it going there. Grill's shot never changes. It is always exactly the same. He's got the, the perfect release and a picture perfect shot. 47 36. The lead is 11. You want to be looking for a stop. Shaver gives up the basketball. Dennis for three and he answers. Averaging 10, Dennis has his first bucket. And it's good to see him take that shot. He was left open a lot in the first half, and he was not looking for his shot. And that was that was the time he was looking. That score first. Bryce Hamilton fadeaway jumper is too strong. Wood with the rebound, gets it to Blake. A little extra pass to Hamilton off the high screen. Try to get some separation from Alston, and he does. That was pretty. That was the, the perfect create space pull-up jumper. Got a little action going these first three minutes of the second half. Dennis got some separation from Blake. Ball is knocked away by Wood out of bounds. It remains Boise State basketball. Yeah, you said we got a little action. We do. We have a lot of offense here, which we like. A nice job here from Dennis knocking one down from distance. And how about a little shake and bake? Create mm. some space. Pretty. And Bryce Hamilton starting to eat up. And an offensive foul is called on Shaver. With 16-28 to play here in the second half. Acott, he figured he wasn't going to sit all that long. You can't keep that man down for too long, especially after the first half that he had. Yeah, at 11 points. He led at halftime. Kijab has slipped past him now with 12. Hamilton into the paint, and he is fouled. Uh, you can tell he's turned it up a notch in his intensity. Are well, they going to call an offensive foul on him? That's interesting. Yeah. That'll be his third personal foul. Boy 
Boise State, 46% from beyond the arc. 40 is the magic number as Grill fouls Alston, who wants the goaltending because he felt like Mbake John swatted that ball away. Here's the foul on Hamilton. Yeah, there's a little push off there with that right arm. I should have looked at Alston. He was calling it. Yeah. <laughs> Little contact. Alston back to the free throw line. He's three of four. Four of five. You can tell Alston is not a player who looks to force things. He lets the game come to him. And if he needs to take over a game, he will. But he does have a little more help this season, which has helped him in terms of his efficiency, not having to do too much. Second free throw is good. The lead is 14 for the Broncos. Four minutes into the second half. Jenkins pull up jumper is good. That's pretty smooth. Here's Alston along the baseline. Slips it inside. Cut off by Mbake John. Hamilton crossover. Pretty move. Knifes through the defense. Well, Hamilton is trying to take on some more responsibility. And he's doing it well. Looking for his shot. The moneymaker. Basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Logitech. Celebrating those who defy logic. And by Army National Guard. The next greatest generation is now. The blue turf that's been synonymous with Boise State football was first installed in 1986. The first college to have a non-green football field. The NFL has a rule. It's the Boise State rule, which means that every field has to be green in the National Football League. Oh, this time out. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern, Western Michigan and Buffalo tip off for a Mid-American Conference clash right here on CBS Sports Network. Buffalo eight and six. They've had some COVID issues like a lot of teams have, but they score a lot of points, 81.9. And they're also pretty good inside the paint too. That's been the story of Buffalo for many years, actually the last several years, a team that has been a great scoring team and obviously some coaching changes there. Yep. And they've still been, uh, they've still been good though. They could score. It'll be with the basketball off the timeout. Hamilton, Jenkins, both in the ball game, Hamilton. Working against Acott. Jenkins good. First step. Pull up jumpers good. Rattles it home. His sophomore year at South Dakota State, he was the second leading scorer in the summit. He had 1,100 points, nearly 1,200 in his two years at South Dakota State. Makes this a 10 point game. Alston, no look pass to Armouche, count the buckets. Armouche's intensity in this game has been really terrific to watch. Alston with the one-handed look again to his big man and the finish down low. Till it's called for the foul. That's his third, so he and Hamilton both with three. All right, so they called the foul on the floor. Armouche still gets the bucket. So he didn't get the first one because they called the foul on the floor, but he gets the second one. He's the old school big man. You know, he parks down low. He knows his job. He commands the paint. He has 11 points. Hamilton draws the contact and will get a couple free throws. 
Darmouche has been tremendous all night long. He's been active on the glass. He's been active in the paint, commanding the ball. Good job that time. Going up for, uh, for the easy bucket, but he's just moving. Mm -hmm. All right, so Hamilton one of two from the line. Make it one of three. You could tell UNLV has made more of a concerted effort to get to the line here in the second half. They are in attack mode. Yeah, just three of eight from the free throw line. And he makes the second one. Substitutions, Hamilton will check out with three fouls. Blake will check back in. A cot to Alston. Armouche with the high screen. Dutrie, step back three, wide open, and he faked it home. Doesn't have to be pretty, right? Use that glass. Still finding his way, battling back from injuries. The transfer from Arizona. He and Acott both. Tillis and an offensive foul called on Tillis. That is number four on Tillis. Coach Rice told us that Dutri is a very dynamic scorer and he can get things going. And you see that on ball screen was a nice job there by Armouche setting the screen. And then again, the defense went underneath the screen, and that's what you need to do. You need to be that weapon and take that shot. Leon Rice told us uh, about his rotation. He said, because we asked him if he was going to change his starting lineup, because his bench has been pretty good. He said, I don't even really have my flow down on the bench as Austin's. Three pointer goes out of bounds. He said, It just, it's this late in the year. And he said, I just, I'm not going to change anything. Minutes might change. He said, But I don't even, as the coach, have my minute flow down yet. Isn't that interesting? I've heard that from many coaches this season because it's just been one of those years where you've had a lot of weird hiccups and stoppages. And some teams just don't feel like they've had as many games now as they would typically have had. And have their lineups all set where the bench is shortened and, and you know exactly who you're playing. Grill shot hits off the side of the iron off the fingertips of Alston out of bounds. It remains UNLV ball. UNLV had made its last three shots. Alston will take a seat. With 13-21 to play here in the second half. And Grill will inbound. Gives it to a cutting Jenkins. Dutrieve on him. Jenkins got him up and over, can't get it to go. Armouche with the rebound. That's number five for him. That's a good switch by UNLV. You get it, Mocke Jong back on Armouche, who misses the, the hook shot. Not a good pass by Blake. Not a good pass by Acott. <laughs> Two telegraph passes. That's a good pass from Jenkins, and it's a three. Uh, that's a way to stay with it defensively, and you get it back, and the defense is scrambling, and you get it for you get it for a three. 57-46. Dutrieve. Right side of the lane, keeps his pivot foot, count the bucket. Now that was pretty. A difficult shot, and you see there, Dutrieff has that dynamic ability and, and gets in the lane. Tillis checks out for UNLV. Moses Wood is in. Hamilton's back in, too. Devonair Dutrieff coming off the on-ball screen. A lot of action off the on-ball screen with their big man, Armouche. Good things happen when he's up there screening and his guards around him just know how to read the offense and the situation well. He didn't play the first half of the year. He became eligible after the first semester. Three double-digit games. He's been nagged by injuries. But a talent. And but a talent, yep. Another weapon for Boise State as he continues to Get comfortable. Jenkins fadeaway jumper kept his pivot foot. It pinballs in and out. And Milner with the rebound. Dennis. Shot 
clock. There's plenty of time left. Acott, separation, pass pass to Milner off the glass. It's good. That is a great look. A beautiful teamwork. Not a lot of one-on-one -on -one isolation basketball from Boise State. They have players that can really see the floor. Largest lead of the night for the Broncos. Jenkins along the baseline. He's out of bounds. And Boise State just continuing to move the basketball. I mentioned assists in the beginning of the broadcast that they're important for this team and their success. And that's exactly what they do. Nice look and finish down low as the Broncos extend this lead. Derek Alston has evolved as an offensive weapon for Leon Rice while he's been at Boise State, but he's also evolved as a leader. Listen to him after the game, the last loss to Nevada. You know, I, didn't, I didn't come back to to be second or third. You know, I came back to win the league, and I think we still, we still have the opportunity to do that. Obviously, a little, it's a little bit harder, but, you know, life's hard. I thought that was a great quote. We mentioned it to Leon Rice, and Leon said, he said, the beauty of having guys for five years, you're going to go through stuff. And right now they're going through stuff. You see where they were on the 21st. Net rank was 13. Jerry Palm had them as the number nine seed. Now their net rank is 36. Jerry's got them as the last one of the last four out. But Leon had a huge smile on his face because he hadn't heard the quote when we, we read it to him yeah, yesterday. He said, I do not look at social media or really read the news in general. So he <laughs> doesn't even know what his players are quoting. But he, he said that's what is, is, is impressive about him. And he backs it up. He backs it yep. up with how he lives, how he leads, and how he plays. And, and how he practiced important. the other day, too. Yeah. Mentioned that he redshirted his freshman year. He was 148 pounds. Leon Rice said we had to do it for his own safety more than anything else. Yeah, he was so scrawny. And now he's put on weight and he looks great. He's strong. Blake up top running the point for UNLV. Running Rebels down by 16. Good backdoor look and Hamilton finishes. Now that's the way to know what to do when you're overplayed. And that's a smart player right there. So you see bouts from Hamilton of explosiveness. Elbow jumper is good. Marcus Shaver has been kind of quiet. That's only five points for him. He averages 12 and a half. Coach Rice told us he's just scratching the surface of who he's going to be. Hamilton with the answer. No good. Too strong. Acott with the rebound. Here come the Broncos. Shaver again. A little crossover against Moses Wood. Leaves it inside for Milner. Missed the easy bucket. I think he got caught a little too far underneath. That was a great look, but you're right. He had bad positioning. 64-48. Hamilton. Double teams. Working against Kijan, turnaround jumper, air ball. And it'll be Boise State basketball. Uh, very important that UNLV doesn't settle for too much one-on-one -on -one isolation basketball. I mean, coach, coach told us that before the game, right? He said that that's when we can get a little bit off course. Sixty four forty eight with nine twenty three to play here in the second half. Something was going on. We've got a timeout. Let's see if UNLV can regroup when we get back. Let's take a look at tonight's game summary brought to you by AT&T 5G points off turnovers Boise State. At 16 to 6. Bench points, and I think we anticipated this because UNLV doesn't go deep. Jenkins is their hot scorer off the bench, but Boise State is outscoring the Runner Rebels by 10. Bryce Hamilton has been better in the second half, Julianne, but he's still a struggle. Yeah, he's looking for his shot more, and you can tell that he's he's really trying 
a little too hard and forcing the action. I think a lot of these shots are just frustration plays because his team needs some offense. And so he's taking some tough shots and they're not going in for him right now. And it's been a struggle for him to really get hot and get himself going. And he's been in some tough, tough, some tough spots on the floor. Typically, he's a guy you see finish plays in traffic and he's pretty smooth. He's very physical. Yep. I think he's frustrated. And give credit to Boise State's defense. They are making it difficult. And Dutree, little step back 17 footer. He connects on that one. So the lead is 18, largest of the night. Dutree has eight off the bench. Hamilton slices through the defense, doesn't get the roll, and that's going to be goaltending against Kijab, I believe. Yeah, I think they counted that bucket. I think Mbake Zhang will get credited with the bucket. Yeah, that was certainly... That, that bucket counted. Yeah. Shaver. Little motion offense by the Broncos. Acott scoreless in the second half. Nice. Armush has it knocked away. Good hands by Jenkins. They'll be happy about that. Little step up on his defense. And that was a play that saved the day. That would have been a layup. Hamilton to Jenkins. Open for three. He's got a quick release, but it's an air ball. Acott bounce pass to Dutrieve and it's blocked from behind. Hamilton, Jenkins again for three, this time gets his feet set off the side of the iron. Just can't find his rhythm. Everything's just a little bit rushed. Alston got off the stationary bike and he's gonna go to the scores table for Boise State. Key jab, bounce pass to Dutree. They switch spots. Key jab for three, short. And Tillis with an easy rebound. Looks like we got some heavy legs out there right now. Yeah, they look a little tired the last couple possessions. Boise State looked not quite their, their themselves. Tillis working against Acott, bounce pass to Abake Jong, and then he couldn't convert. And you said it earlier, UNLV doesn't go too deep. They have to no. sub the ton. No, in fact, they've gone one extra player, or two extra deep tonight, with Reese Brown getting in and Delcadia getting in. 6.56 to play here in the second half. We're going to have some free throws when we return for the Broncos. Join the Inside College basketball crew as they talk all things hoops and the road to the Final Four right here on CBS Sports Network. Boise State on top by 16, 66-50 with under seven minutes to play. Inside that huddle is Leon Rice. Leon has 212 career wins. He needs one win to tie the program record. Bobby Dye holds the program record with 213. Bobby spent... Uh, 12 years as the head coach at Boise State. He won three Big Sky Conference titles. He is still rocking and rolling in Carlsbad, California at the uh, young age of 83 years old. We asked Leon about it, and, and you know, he said that after the first few games of his first year, he called his buddies back at Gonzaga. He was there for 11 years. He said, we're not going to win a ball game this year. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they found out they were not going to be in the WAC. Right. And they were going to be in the Mountain West. And he was just like, we had seven freshmen at the time. And it was going to be really hard. Five teams were going to the NCAA tournament. And so he really has enjoyed the ride here and he feels fortunate to be in a place for so long he was also at, at his previous school for a long time yeah. so worked under mark few for 11 years he said he and the his family and the few family uh, were like family he said his boys grew up with mark few's boys they're still very close and they've been able to win the mountain west 
which has been pretty cool. He's seen success. Success. Tillis off the glass, no good. And Kijab runs out with the rebound. It's an 18-point lead for Boise State. Matches the largest of the night. Dennis for three. No good. In and out. Armouche with the rebound. That's number six for him. Uh, UNLV has just struggled offensively in this second half. They have not been able to buy a hoop the last few possessions. Yeah, it's been a quiet second half offensively. Dennis quick burst, leaves it for Armouche, and no foul is called. Here comes Jenkins for UNLV. Jenkins pull up three, no good. And a foul on the floor. It's going to go against Boise State. I think it's going to go against Alston. Julianne, we've hit a little bit of a drought. Two and a half minutes for UNLV, three minutes for Boise State. Teams are combined 0 for 10 during that stretch. Fatigue is definitely a factor here. See the clock running down below. No points in a little more than three minutes. Hamilton trying to end that. Turn around, fade away. Jumper is good. He does end it. He's got to feel relief after that shot. He's missed a bunch before that. And what I like about Hamilton is he doesn't care. He continues to look for his shot. He keeps going after it. He keeps being aggressive. And he's got to for this team. Ten second half points. Alston in the paint. Dennis running in the paint. Doesn't get the angle. And Moses Wood with the rebound. He got bumped a lot. Hamilton stopping three. It's good. 15 points for Hamilton. And he's made this a 13-point game and a timeout called by the Broncos. I think if you're Leon Rice, you don't want this to go get away. But you also, if you're TJ Otzelberger, you want to ride this momentum. Absolutely. I mean, Hamilton, the last couple possessions, knocks down a couple shots. And all of a sudden, you're, you're almost in this game. You could cut this thing to 10 points in one more possession. So it's we, all about chipping away and hanging in there. Yep. Speaking of hanging in there, UNLV certainly has had to do that. Like a lot of teams around college basketball this year, they have had some disruptions because of COVID. Not only do they lose Marvin Coleman, who did have COVID, but also is out with a stress fracture. But they've had six games canceled or postponed. They paused on the 15th of December, and they went 48 days without a home game. Now, Incredible. I think a lot of teams have gone through it, but it is still part of what TJ uh, Otzelberger has had to go through this year. And the teams that are doing the best at this point have been able to to play a little bit more basketball. When you think about it, mm -hmm. it has definitely played a role. So the teams that have gotten hit more haven't found the rhythm yet. But Hamilton on ACOT. Five weeks of not practicing. That's unbelievable. I mean, Zoom has become popular for everybody, but that's when you really <laughs> lean on. Yep your ability to get on the computer with the kids and just maintain the relationships but you can't practice and that's tough hamilton along the sidelines got his man off his feet step to the right three it's good now he's starting to feel it he has 18 points he leads all scores the lead is 12 for boise state and that's a baller right there getting his second wind There's also the psychological part that he's had to go through with that ankle, according to T.J. Otzelberger. Armouche underneath. Armouche gets the bounce off the rim of the backboard. That's a good point. You don't know what you can and can't do. So you really have to just experiment with your body. Grill lets it fly. The ball is knocked out of bounds by Boise State and Alston. UNLV is inching back into this one, but Boise State continues to have the answers wherever it is down in the paint. They're doing a tremendous job getting it down low and attacking the glass, and they still are up here with 346 to go.
Time now for tonight's Geico Difference Makers. We mentioned in the open that it was important for Derek Alston to have a good game, but that the supporting cast does as well. And Kijad has 14 points on four of nine shooting for Boise State. And Acott has 13 points off the bench. He's only got two in the second half, but it was his first half offense that fueled the Broncos. Acott was tremendous and certainly two X factors in this game. And, and that's what's enabled Derek Alston to not have to score 20 tonight. He, he just hasn't had to because he's got other players have, that have been stepping up. And I love how Leon Rice called Kijab his, one of his two lions or three lions. He <laughs> called a few of his players his lions, but he's one of his voices of the group. Hamilton off the inbounds, and he has a fadeaway three. That was difficult. Yeah, that, that's hard. You are leaning, and you are far from the hoop. Really coming up strong here at the end. Yeah, this, this may bode well for UNLV in game two against Boise State and beyond. Armouche. And do they have enough to cut this lead? Well, if they get a three here, or even a two, they can cut it to single digits. Hamilton for three, short. And UNLV has proven they can hang around. And Boise State has not been able to put them away. Acott just took a look over to the bench to Leon Rice. Alston. Shaver for three. It's good. Slipped off the side of the rim and went down. It's 75 61. And a timeout called by Boise State. Give me an idea of what you think Leon Rice is uh, using this timeout for, Julian. Is this to get the defense set as we look at this uh, three pointer? Yeah, I would think so. And Marcus Shaver stepping up here big. And Leon Rice told us before the game that he's a guy who could get 40 on any night mm -hmm. if he wants it. But he's still learning. And he's a, he's a player who gets frustrated when he doesn't score, but very talented. And you saw as soon as he made that shot, Leon Rice walked over and started calling the timeout. I think he just wants to manage these less. Managing these, yeah. Yes, he's giving these guys a break. That's one thing to really think about. They're tired, they're fatigued. Give them this rest here, and so they can come out with some energy to finish the last 248. Because they've been a little tired. Mm -hmm. They've definitely fatigued some, even though they have played more players than UNLV. Well, their defense has been better tonight. They said it had to be, and they also felt like they had to capitalize on these four home games, including tonight that are coming up. UNLV on Saturday and then Utah State next week for the doubleheader before they hit the road for the final two games right now of the regular season against San Diego State. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. We're finishing up February here before we know it. See their record at home despite the fact that there are really only a sprinkling of fans about 50 just family that are there tonight watching from Extra Mile Arena. But this Broncos team has had a pretty good understanding of how to get things done and how to be pretty consistent throughout the season here. Hamilton in the paint, fade away from the free throw line is good over the top of Kijan. Now he's just making ridiculous he shots. He sure is. <laughs> he's got 23, 21 in the second half. I mean, he was frustrated for a while there. Now it's just that's led to his his glory, his play has been tremendous. And when you allow your frustration to actually do the positive, that's when you see this kind of play. It's a high level mm -hmm. shot, a difficult shot. And, and the fact he's a lefty really helps him on that side of the floor with that fadeaway. Well, they need a stop here. They didn't get the stop because Acott knifed right past the defense and threw it. And Boise State continues to have an answer. Hamilton in the paint again. Jenkins, three, and it's no good. Armouche with a seventh rebound. 14-point game. You might have to start 
thinking about fouling here. Yeah, I think so too. Pretty soon, they're going hard for the steals, at least at first. Trying to trying to get a steal. Hamilton is three. Acock. Yeah, I, I think that getting them to the free throw line is pretty appropriate at this point with 126 left because you need to extend the yeah. life of this game. And make them earn it at the line and try to get more minutes. Absolutely, that's the game plan. Now, Boise State could win it at the line easily if mm -hmm. they want to. Front end of the one and one is good. Now, that's important because they missed three front ends from the free throw line in the last game against Nevada. They were 19 of 27 from the free throw line. They're 18 of 22 tonight. It's a much different night. Jenkins cut off from the free throw line short. He's been a little short tonight with his shots, particularly in the second half. And now you, you're either just calling off the dogs or you're going to foul. Uh, it appears they're calling off the dogs here. One minute. It's okay for the Broncos. They'll just dribble some time off. And now some action. Acott lost it to Armouche. Alston for three. And it's no good. Armouche with the offensive board. say a little odd but they were down by 14 now it's a 15 point game and give credit to the runner rebels they did come back they yep. did hang in there just a little too too little too late key jab with the miss three here comes hamilton 15 seconds left hamilton for three it's good he's had a magical second half 24 points in the second half 26 overall Wow, I'm just patting those stats right now. Mm -hmm. And that'll do it. Boise State will win game one of this doubleheader, 78 to 66. And Leon Rice will pick up career win number 213 for the Broncos. He ties Bobby Dye for the most in program history. Ends by picking up the victory, the 15th overall. The Broncos also move into a tie with Colorado State and are a half game behind Utah State. And don't forget, after the game against UNLV, they have Utah State next week. This yeah. is a big win for Boise Tremendous State. Tremendous win. You win the games at home, right? And they did yep. a great job th there tonight. 8 0 at home for Julian Viani and our entire crew. I'm Tom McCarthy. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Boise State wins, they rebound. Now let's send it to our New York studios for Inside College Basketball.